Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming the incredibly talented Michelle Forbes, star of Berlin Station on Epix, premiering October 16th at 9 p.m. We talk all about the new show, her career, and more, so get ready for a great day behind the velvet rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. So the first thing I say to you, Michelle Forbes, when I see is not congratulations on the new show. It's like, hey, I love Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> I got Bro Laren sitting in here. It's awesome. <laughs> like, how many times do you get that a day? Um, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Your response was the best. I got it. What was the thing you called? Uh, uh, we don't have yeah, to yeah. discuss that. It's a little inside joke. <laughs> it was great, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so congratu now I'm going to go to congratulations on the new show, Berlin Station. I am dying to see this thing. I'm a huge spy genre nut, and the reviews you've been getting are terrific. And what a cast you've got, Richard Armitage. I mean, it's like they, they could they, the wealth of power here of actors is great. Talk to me all about it. Yeah, I'm really excited about our show. Um, we're all very proud of our show. Uh, we have one of the most stellar casts I've ever worked with, and they're not just amazing actors. They're, they're truly, truly wonderful, good people. And um, when you're spending six months away on the road, you know, that's what you need. You need to have a group of people that you enjoy, that you like, uh, that you can support, that support you, and, um, and we got to shoot in, you know, the most beautiful city in the world, Berlin. I feel like Berlin is its own character in the show. Just like from looking at it, it feels so raw, so mm. real. When you guys are on set, do you get that same feeling while you're there that, hey, this is going to feel like we're taking, transporting people to this world? Well, I hope, I hope that's the case, absolutely. Um, we were so fortunate to get um, Hagen, our, our, our DOP, who, has, who knows that city like the back of his hand, and he's such an amazing photographer. So he was able to capture the city in a way that perhaps somebody who wasn't from Berlin wouldn't. And uh, it, was su it was such a great gift and luxury to be shooting in the nooks and crannies of that city. And, and there are many. There are many secret passageways and uh, dark spots all over Berlin. And um, it's, it's just such a fascinating, endless city. You guys have like an Edward Snowden thing going on mm. with this show. So for those who are not aware of what Berlin Station is going to bring, tell me what it's going to bring. What are they getting when they see this show? Uh, well, you're, you're getting a lot of great performances, um, a, a very uh, complex story uh, about people at the CIA, a very clandestine institution uh, that we, 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 we get to sort of dig into the psychologies of these people. Um, and you get to track them through a city that also holds its own mystery and history. and. It's slick, it's stylish, it's sexy, it's, um, it's complicated. And we're also looking at, at issues that are incredibly important today. You and know, relevant. And, and incredibly and relevant. relevant. Um, so, and, and, this, and this, was a, this was a subject I was incredibly passionate about before I started this project, this, this idea of information leaking and um, the FOIA and and you know Snowden and Assange and how people are so uh, polarized about their feelings about them and you know there was a lot of discussion amongst our company as we were shooting and and I really hope that you know this this story will spark that conversation and ignite and incite some sort of debate over um, I would say other than climate change one of the most important uh, subjects that we have to deal with today You've worked on so many terrific shows, from True Blood to The Killing. By the way, The Killing, I wish that would have gone on so much longer, <laughs> to TNG, to Star Trek. What, when you are looking for a role, when you're looking for your next project, what draws you to something like Berlin Station? Uh, there are so many things that come into determining what job you're going to do next. I mean, it's, 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 it's always it's a real sacrifice that you're giving. You're giving up years of your life, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, on this one, it was uh, I, I, there were so many 
boxes that I could tick. It was the actors involved. It was um, Brad Winters, our showrunner. Uh, my, the first the, the first television show I ever really signed on for was called Homicide Life on the Streets yep. back in the 90s. And Tom Fontana was our showrunner, Papa, Papa Fontana. <laughs> and uh, he vetted Brad as a young writer. So I felt in a strange way like I was coming home. I was going full circle and coming home. So Brad was uh, an enormous part of the decision making. And uh, Mikhail Roskam, our, our director, Oscar nominated director, Belgian genius, um, his, his being attached to it was was a big part of the decision and in Berlin. So well, like, it's, like, it's a vacation. How, 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 how can I go wrong? Exactly. When you look at television right now, and we're seeing, I mean, Epics is now building its own original mm -hmm. program. You've got the streamings, the Netflixes, the Hulus. Epics is out of the gate with a strong show here. Two what strong you, shows. Two strong shows. What do you think it is right now about TV that is drawing such great talent, such great writers, such great shows? Well, I think that's been going on for a little while. And um, what I love about television, this, this is my theory, what I love about television is that it's a, it's a socialist medium. Everybody has a television in their house. So everybody should have access to good storytelling and to information. Um, when it's cost prohibitive for families to go to the cinema because it's $20 a ticket and they're only superhero <laughs> films on anyway and we're not including parking, babysitting, popcorn, what have you. That's, a, that's an expensive night for people. And so all of those people, like all, especially like all those independent directors and filmmakers and actors back in the 90s, everybody sort of slowly started morphing into television, I would say maybe about 10 years ago, around the time of Sopranos. And um, we've just watched it grow and grow and grow ever since. So it's, it's, it's been a wonderful time for me to be a part of this, this industry. And, and I'm, 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 I'm really honored and kind of humbled to have not only you know, not only have I have I borne witness to it, but I've been a part of it, and that's kind of, you know, that makes me happy. Having been on so many different shows, is there one that really touches your heart? One that you feel connected to as an actor and as a person? Oh wow! Uh, I just that, went Barbara Walters there for a second. I you did. I even gave my I'm intro, like, connected to <laughs> as a person and as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we get in hosting school. Like you have to enunciate, like actor, person. No, I'm just really. No, is that is that? Not. <laughs> of course, it's a hosting school. They're I like, was gonna say they have a halfway decent they have personality. Get schools? on camera and talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> and be charming and funny and the smart. The reason I'm sitting in this chair is because I can't do what you do for a living. I have a lisp. I don't look like Brad Pitt. Are you kidding me? Imagine me acting like, like doing Shakespeare. Like, Thou shalt kill. Like, come on. I have to do this for a living. <laughs> 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 you think I'm joking right now? No, I'm <laughs> being serious. But what, was there one that particularly, back in the series, <laughs> back to series mode, um, was there one that you really feel connected to? I just want to hear you say actor again. Actor. <laughs> but, like, but you've got to do it like actor. There you go. Oh, God. You could, you guys, we could switch seats. Actor. That. So, Arthur, what role have you been attracted to? No, um. <laughs> This is the perfect way before it. This is the way you roll into Yom Kippur. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been connected to? <laughs> just this, just this present this is, moment. This is the moment. This is this is the zenith of this my is career. The moment. Um, there are so many. I mean, I've been doing this for thirty years, and I've been so fortunate to be part of so many. I don't know how I got so lucky. So many extraordinary shows and working with so many people. Um, True Blood, I'm, I was a playground. I don't get to play characters like that very often. Um, another pioneering show, by the way. Yeah. Another yeah. pioneering show. And such an extraordinary group of people. And what, nine years later, we're still all very, very close. And I carry them in my heart all the time. And um, In Treatment was a show that, uh, was incredibly stressful, I remember, as we were doing it, but I was so proud of the outcome, and 
Um, Durham County, this show I did in Canada, this Canadian series, I, I, I still have flashbacks and memories, and, and Adrian Mitchell, our, our director, is still an incredibly good friend of mine. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And now Berlin Station, I mean, I cry every time I talk about Berlin. So, um, yeah, I, gosh, I'm, I am going to start crying because I'm realizing how fortunate I am. One person <laughs> we were geeking out over earlier, Sir Patrick Stewart, one of my favorite people. You actually, you guys had a relationship on TNG. Talk to me about Patrick. So working with someone like him, uh, we were just saying, one of the coolest people in this biz. I've interviewed him so many times. And I say he's one of my favorites. Outside of being a Trekkie, he's one of my favorites. He's, he's, he's extraordinary. He's, he's a gentleman. He's so funny. And he's, he's such an extraordinary actor. And, you know, I was a kid. That was, that was really like my first real job in television. And to be vetted by Patrick Stewart and that whole gang, you know, um, Again, I, I, I don't know how I've been so fortunate. You are going to make me cry. Yeah, <laughs> you, are gonna, you are going to, you are going to, you've got all Walter Walters on moments. me. I'm going to start crying. You also have Richard Jenkins on your show now, who is freaking awesome. That guy is unbelievable. When, you, when you're around actors like this, I mean, you've been doing it 30 years and you're terrific, but when you get to be around these types of thespians, does it blow your mind to sit there and see them work? Like someone like Jenkins, who's done so much great work over his mm. career, what separates guys like, and, and even women, what separates the greats from the good? I would say humor and temperament, really. Um, I don't know how to answer that question, actually. It's, it, it, be, perhaps because being great, there, there's something undefinable about that. When somebody has a gift, they just have a gift. It's and an you can't, quality. You, you can't really label it or define it. And... Um, and I, and I have worked with a lot of actors like that, so, you know, you watch curiously. But you're also usually, you know, you're working with, so you can't spend that time doing that. You have to be engaging. Um, and then it's just like, wow, I get to play tennis with, you know, Serena Williams. Awesome. <laughs> that's, pretty, that, that's a great, great point. You play a strong female character on this show, and I feel like we are beginning to see more and more strong female characters both in television and film, but what more has to be done right now? I mean, I feel like there's still a lot of ways to go. What more do you think has to be done? Um, well, I would say that we, ha we might need to stop labeling it strong women. Okay. Only because um, we never say that about men. It's true. You're 100% and, right. Um, and our strength is equal to our vulnerabilities in bo with both genders. So um, I, th I think that's, that's a good place to start, to, to, to really stop defining it in that sense. And, um, I, you know, that, that, that's such a, uh, it's a good question. It's a great question, actually. But it's also a loaded question. And, you know, I feel that we've made such progress. You know, you, you, you see shows like, you know, you've got Kira Sedgwick and Mary McDonnell who are leading cop shows, in, in, and they're women over 40. Yep. And, um, you know, Tamlin and I are the two uh, regulars on Berlin Station, and we're both over 50. So, you know, I think we, we just have to keep moving forward. And we, we uh, and I think we are. And, and, you know, Jill Soloway has, you know, sort of broken Re through redefined, the system. Redefined and TV. Yeah, she's absolutely redefined it, and she did it in such an authentic way, and we've got Ava DuVernay. It's changing, and we just have to really be happy and proud of that, that it's changing, and that it's changing for, you know, actors of different colors as well. It's, it's their time, too. And I don't know why it's taken so long for all of this. I really, really don't. Hollywood moves slow. Like it's well, just that's really unfortunate crazy. because because we're telling stories about human life, and if you look around, we're all different colors and we're different genders, and that's just life. So we need to really kind of step it up. <laughs> Who are the actors and actresses you looked up to while you were growing up in the business? The actors that I looked up to were Glenda Jackson, um, Vanessa Redgrave, 
uh, Jean Moreau, uh, Isabelle Huppert. Um, There's a great new movie out, by the way. I heard, yes. Ow. I'm dying to see it. Ow. I'm dying to see it. Yep. Um, yeah, those those were. I'm, I'm sure there are others I'm I'm not thinking about. Jessica Lange, Francis had a huge effect on me when I was a kid. Um, but I, I would say like Jean Moreau and Isabelle Huppert had 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 a huge effect on me too. When people see Berlin Station, what do you hope they take away from it? So if they if you were to define it in one sentence, what do you hope people take away from Berlin Station? exciting and thoughtful. That's perfect. <laughs>